This is AQA A-Level Chemistry. It's the year 13 thermodynamics topic, and this is part two. In this video, we're going to take a look at Born Harbor cycles, putting together all of the different enthalpy changes and the definitions that were in part one and building those Born Harbor cycles ready for us to move forward and do calculations with them later. As always, I'm going to recommend that you pause, have a go for yourself at the different activities. So, as I've said, Born Harbor cycles. We're going to look at how we can construct them for simple ionic compounds, and we're going to look at how we can then begin to use them to calculate enthalpies of formation. Um, I've said on here they are similar to Hess cycles. They're similar in the sense that they work on the basis of Hess's law that we're looking at two alternative routes to get from reactant to product. And then from there, we're going to see how we can start to input figures and data into that to actually carry out the calculations. That will be in a later video. So to begin with, let's take a look at sodium chloride. We've got here the equation for the enthalpy of formation of sodium chloride. And your job is to try to build the Born Harbor cycle. Now, I am going to say that it utilizes the majority of the enthalpy changes that were discussed in the last video. Beyond that, and this is going to come up later in the video, if something is an exothermic process, the arrow should go down the page. And if something is an endothermic process, it should go up the page. So when you've had a go at building the cycle, take a look at what it looks like. And in the first instance, we have got here our enthalpy of formation, Na solid, half Cl2 going to NaCl solid. The enthalpy change when one mole of the compound is formed from its elements in their standard states under standard conditions. Formation is an exothermic process, so the arrow goes down. Remember, if you bring things together, that's going to be exothermic. If you're breaking things apart or separating them, that will be endothermic because you're going to need to put energy in to do it. So what is the alternative route? Well, we <clears throat> are going to have to find a different way around, and there are multiple steps. So we've got formation going down here. What I'm looking at at the moment is I've got solid sodium and I've got half Cl2 gaseous. Well, let's start by atomizing. I'm going to atomize my sodium. So the delta H80 enthalpy of atomization of sodium and I've not changed the half Cl2. On a Born Harbor cycle, you only change one thing in each step. So Na solid goes to Na gas. And you've got examples of equations. I think that's an actual example on the previous video. Now I've atomized my sodium. I'm going to atomize my chlorine. My half Cl2, my half a mole of Cl2 molecules become one mole of chlorine atoms. So I've now got NAG and CLG. The next thing I'm going to do is first ionization enthalpy for sodium. We're going to talk about why we're doing all of this in a second. It's culminating in that final step of the cycle. But I've got to show it fully. Enthalpy of first ionization is Na gaseous going to Na plus gaseous. Remember, the enthalpy change when one mole of gaseous atoms loses one mole of electrons to form one mole of gaseous ions with a plus one charge. I've got to show the electrons in my cycle. The final thing I need to do, if I've got an Na+, plus, then I'm going to need a Cl- minus that's going to react with it. Well, I've got an electron that the chlorine can gain. So I'm going to do first electron affinity of chlorine. So my Na plus remains the same. My E minus joins my Cl gaseous to make Cl minus gaseous. What I now have is a gaseous positive ion and a negative gaseous ion. And the enthalpy of lattice formation is the enthalpy change when one mole of solid ionic compound is made from its gaseous ions. So that's enthalpy of lattice formation, formation, bringing together, exothermic. 
Lattice dissociation would be exactly the same place, but the arrow would be in the opposite direction. <sighs> okay, have a think about the energy changes. You've got some clues from the example we've just given. So I've already said enthalpy of formation is always exo. It will always be a downward arrow. You are bringing things together to make something new. But if we're atomizing something, we're breaking it apart. We're either separating atoms within a solid or we're breaking apart diatomic molecules. That means it's an endothermic process. Ionization, we are separating an electron from its atom. That requires energy. So it's an endothermic process. In electron affinity, we're bringing an electron in. It's joining the atom. So for that reason, we're going to say it's exo. However, there is a slight difficulty here. There's an extra piece of information because first electron affinity is exothermic when that negative electron comes in and joins the atom. However, if I do second electron affinity, so for example, an electron comes to join a Cl minus ion, my negative ion and my electron are going to repel because they're both negatively charged. So I'm going to need to provide energy to overcome that repulsion. So first electron affinity is exothermic, but all others are endothermic. That becomes really important when we're building our cycles. Lattice formation, as I said on the example, lattice formation, we're bringing together gaseous ions, so that makes it exo, and lattice dissociation, we're breaking ions apart. That means it's endo. So we've got a few more examples here of Hess cycles to draw. Have a go at drawing them before you review. So this one is very similar to the NaCl. I start with my enthalpy of formation, solid carbon, half of Br2 goes to KBr, solid. So formation going down here. I'm then going to do my atomizations. I'm atomizing my potassium. You'll notice the only thing that's changed in these examples is highlighted. K solid to K gaseous. Once I've atomized one, I'm going to atomize the other. My half Br2 becomes Br gaseous. I then need to do my first ionization enthalpy. So K goes to K plus, and don't forget to include the electron. My Br gaseous remains Br gaseous. But then I'm going to do electron affinity. My Br becomes Br minus. It's taken the electron in. It's gained it. Now that I've got my gaseous ions, positive and negative, I've got my lattice formation enthalpy. On to the next example, LiCl. And again, no surprises on this one. We're going to build on what we're doing at the moment in the next couple of cycles. But LiCl, well, Li, solid, plus half Cl2, gaseous goes to LiCl, solid. State symbols must be included. The enthalpy change when one mole of the compound is formed from its elements in their standard states under standard conditions. Well, my first step, as always, I'm going to atomize. First, I atomize my lithium, then I atomize my chlorine. I've now got my atoms, I can start to form the ions. So my lithium gaseous becomes Li plus gaseous. It loses or one mole of lithium atoms, gaseous lithium atoms, loses a mole of electrons to form one mole of gaseous lithium ions. After ionization comes electron affinity. My Cl gaseous goes to Cl minus gaseous. One mole of gaseous atoms gains one mole of electrons to form one mole of gaseous ions with a minus one charge. I've now got my gaseous ions, so I can put my lattice formation enthalpy in. Next one for you to try. And once again, we start with the enthalpy of formation. In this case, one mole of MgCl2 will be made from Mg solid and Cl2 gaseous. That's going to have an impact specifically and particularly when we start to put numbers in. 
So first one, we're going to atomize. Let's atomize our magnesium, Mg solid to Mg gaseous. The next thing we're going to do is atomize the chlorine. But look, we're making two moles of gaseous chlorine atoms. That means that this is two times the enthalpy of atomization of chlorine. Enthalpy of atomization is the formation of one mole of gaseous atoms from its elements at standard states and standard conditions. So as a calculation, whatever the enthalpy of atomization of chlorine is, I'm going to double it. Really important we remember. Once we've done that, we are going to ionize the magnesium. Now, Mg goes to Mg+. Plus. It's lost an electron. One mole of gaseous atoms loses one mole of electrons to form one mole of gaseous ions with a plus one charge. But magnesium's in group two, so we don't just have first ionization enthalpy on here, we have second as well. So the enthalpy change when one mole of gaseous ions with a plus one charge loses a mole of electrons, there's an extra one there, to form one mole of gaseous ions with a plus two charge. So I've got my first ionization enthalpy, my second ionization enthalpy, and I am showing those separately. The next thing is to make the negative ions, that's electron affinity. My 2Cl will each gain electrons to form 2Cl minus gaseous. But again, from calculation terms, we're making two moles of gaseous ions with a minus one charge. That means we would double the electron affinity of chlorine in the calculation at this stage. But we've now got our positive ions, our negative ions, gaseous, gaseous. So we can do our lattice formation enthalpy. Another example, final example actually of a cycle, MgO. And we're starting off with enthalpy of formation. This systematic route through is really important to learn. Formation is our start point. From there, we're going to atomize our magnesium. Mg solid goes to Mg gaseous. The next thing we do is atomize our oxygen. Half O2 gaseous goes to O gaseous. We're making one mole, so we've not got that situation where we're doubling here. From there, we're going to do for ionization enthalpies. First ionization, Mg goes to Mg plus, plus E minus, gaseous, gaseous. The O remains as O gaseous. Remember, magnesium is in group two, which means it forms plus two ions. So we've had first ionization enthalpy. We're now going to do second ionization enthalpy, step by step. Once we've done that, we can start to do electron affinity of oxygen. Well, O goes to O minus, gaining an electron, gaseous, gaseous, remembering the state symbols. But we've got second electron affinity as well. And here's the additional complication. Remember what we said earlier. First electron affinity is exothermic. The arrow's going down. But we're then having an O minus gaining an E minus. There is a natural repulsion because they are the same charge. So our second electron affinity, we go back up the page. O minus goes to O2 minus, gaining the electron. At that point, I have my ions and I can put my lattice formation enthalpy in. Remembering all of these lattice enthalpies, I could have done lattice dissociation enthalpy going up the page. Always read the question to check carefully which one it is that you're either given or are calculating. To finish off this video, what do we notice about the trend in lattice enthalpies? And I can see here that it's going down, 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 down. It's dropping as we go across. It's dropping as we go down. The overwhelming trend here is it goes down as negative ions get larger and positive ions get larger. Why? Well, as the ions increase in size, the enthalpies do decrease in value. And that's because in larger ions, there's a greater distance between those positive ion centers, those nuclei. And if there's a greater distance, there's a greater distance between those 
and therefore between the oppositely charged ions. That means that there is less attraction and that means there is less energy needed to overcome them and less energy released when they are overcome. And finally, what do we think would happen to enthalpy values if instead of plus one and minus one ions, we had plus two and minus two ions? And this one's possibly a little bit more straightforward. Lattice enthalpy will increase as charges increase. And that's because the higher the charge, the stronger the electrostatic attraction between the oppositely charged ions. So more energy needed to overcome them, more energy released when they're formed. So lattice enthalpies are dependent on the size of the ions and the charge on the ions. And that takes us to the end of part two. Thank you for listening and goodbye.